Hi, I'm Aisha. You are watching Educational Hub. The preparation of research projects is a time-honored task, requiring both creative thinking and rigorous analytical skills. This guide is intended to make this process systematically and easily understood. While there's a lot of freedom and discovery to be had from the topics you've chosen, there's also a lot of norms and restrictions that come with the data and methods you're using, no matter what your academic level or field of study. For those in high school through to doctoral students, and from art history to archaeology, research planning involves broadly similar steps, including formulating a question, developing an argument or predictions based on previous research, then selecting the information needed to answer your question. Some of this might sound self-evident but, as you'll find, research requires a different way of approaching and using information than most of us are accustomed to in everyday life. That is why I include orienting yourself to knowledge creation as an initial step in the process. This is a crucial and underappreciated phase in education, akin to making the transition from salaried employment to entrepreneurship. Suddenly, you're on your own, and that requires a new way of thinking about your work. How to plan a research project. Here is key points. 1. Planning a research project is essential no matter your academic level or field of study. There is no one best way to design research but there are certain guidelines that can be helpfully applied across disciplines. 2. Orient yourself to knowledge creation. Make the shift from being a consumer of information to being a producer of information. 3. Define your research question. Your question frames the rest of your project, sets the scope, and determines the kinds of answers you can find. 4. Review previous research on your question. Survey the existing body of relevant knowledge to ensure that your research will be part of a larger conversation. 5. Choose your data and methods. For instance, will you be collecting qualitative data, via interviews, or numerical data, via surveys? 6. Circle back and consider revising your initial plans. Expect your research question in particular to undergo multiple rounds of refinement as you learn more about your topic. In this way, the preparation of research requires four steps, which is an orientation towards knowledge creation, definition of your research question, examination of previous research on your subject, and selecting relevant data to answer your own questions. Because this guide is dedicated to planning a research project, rather than conducting one, it does not explore the details of data collection or analysis. Those steps will occur after you've set out your projects. Furthermore, this topic has a broad scope. Data and analysis are an integral part of the year-long PhD courses. Rather, some basic strategies to be used in planning the data segmentation and analysis process that is relevant for your research question will be given in the fourth part of this section. Step 1. Orient yourself you have to change your thinking from consumer of information to producer of information in order to plan and conduct research. It may seem simple, but this is a very difficult task. In practical terms, that means removing the mindset of a student who thinks knowledge is something created by other people. We are often passive evaluators of knowledge as students. Asked to do a particular set of readings, then assessed on how well we reproduce what we've read. However, researchers need to play an active part in the production of knowledge. It takes more than reading and absorbing what other people have written for research. You must interact with it. So, we argue with past knowledge and in some cases try to prove that the ideas which we accept as valid are really not true at all. For example, rather than simply taking in the claims of an author you read, you'll need to draw out the implications of those claims. If what the author is saying is true, what else does that suggest must be true? What are the inferences that you can draw from the author's statements? Step 2. Define your research question. This step is often ignored by students, 
but experienced researchers know that the most difficult part of the research planning process is often the formulation of a good question. The precise wording of the question therefore forms the basis for the rest of the project. Therefore, it is important that the question should be posed in a manner both comprehensible and likely to produce interesting results. You have to choose the question that interests you, but it's only a start of an iterative process. Most researchers are returning to this step and making changes in response to previous research, constraints on resources or other considerations. In some ways, new and unique information needs to emerge from these scholarly research questions. For instance, there have been a lot of people studying the gender roles in sports teams. What can you say that isn't said before? Reinventing the wheel in this endeavor is the number one no therefore. The next step is a review of previous research on your topic. You might need to revise your research question in the light of what you discover at this stage. Iterating between your question and the existing literature is a normal process. But don't worry. It doesn't go on forever. In fact, the iterations taper off, and your research question stabilizes, as you develop a firm grasp of the current state of knowledge on your topic. Step 3. Review previous research. A section called, Literature Review, is often found in academic research, from literature articles to books. This section is designed to describe the current situation of knowledge on a particular research issue which has arisen from this project. It demonstrates that researchers have thoroughly and systematically reviewed the relevant findings of previous studies on their topic, and that they have something novel to contribute. Something like this should be included in your research project, although it's a high school term paper. In your research process, you'll want to put together a minimum of half a dozen bullet points that point out the most important findings from other people on this topic. Your overall goal in this step of the process is to show that your research will be part of a larger conversation. That is, how your project flows from what's already known, and how it advances extends or challenges that existing body of knowledge. That will be the contribution of your project, and it constitutes the motivation for your research. Step 4. Choose your data and methods. The choice of the most likely data source and analytical strategy to deliver answers you seek will ultimately have to be considered, regardless of what your research question is. One starting point is to consider whether your question would be best addressed by qualitative data, such as interviews, observations or historical records, quantitative data, such as surveys or census records, or some combination of both. Your ideas about data sources will, in turn, suggest options for analytical methods. You might need to collect your own data or you might find everything you need readily available in an existing dataset someone else has created. A great place to start is with a research librarian. University libraries always have them and, at public universities, those librarians can work with the public, including people who aren't affiliated with the university. If you don't happen to have a public university and its library close at hand, an ordinary public library can still be a good place to start. The librarians are often well versed in accessing data sources that might be relevant to your study, such as the census, or historical archives, or the survey of consumer finances. Circle back and consider revising your initial plans. As you work through these four steps in planning your project, it's perfectly normal to circle back and revise. Research planning is rarely a linear process. It's also common for new and unexpected avenues to suggest themselves. As the sociologist Thorstein Veblen wrote in 1908, the outcome of any serious research can only be to make two questions grow where only one grew before. That's as true of research planning as it is of a completed project. Try to enjoy the horizons that open up for you in this process rather than becoming overwhelmed. The four steps, along with the two exercises that follow, will help you focus your plan and make it manageable. Thank you for watching, like share and subscribe my channel for more informative videos.